Welcome back to my weekly update for Holiday World and Holiday Happenings. My name is Narelle Malouish and I'm glad to share with you what's going on in the travel industry and what's been happening with our business. So we've had a huge news week, a huge good and bad news week that included Qantas and Virgin, information about the Trans-Tasman bubble, the Buller bubble, the borders and bookings. But first, I thought you might be interested to know what's happening with my team and I thought I'd give you an update with that. We all managed to catch up with Brie this week, have a drink with her and just to see where she was at. Unfortunately, she was one of the first of our team that was made redundant at the beginning of the pandemic. And she's managed to pick up some work in a local retailer in the shopping centre. So I'm hoping that you'll see her around there. Gary, who's been with us for quite some time, he's going to be taking long surface sleeve. So you won't be seeing him again now until August or September. And in the middle of that, he's moving house. So that just works in perfectly for him and perfectly with us as we work through cancellations and refunds. Doug has picked up a few odd jobs around town and he'll be continuing to do that. So you might see him around. He's been investigating some transport options with that to pick up some extra work. And he's been doing lots of house improvements, home improvements for me, and our house has never looked better. We have Tash and Wendy, they're working through all your cancellations and refunds, mostly working part-time. So they're both looking to pick up a little bit of extra bookings, a little bit of extra work themselves part-time. So if you know anyone that would love a good administrator that has some part-time work, then please keep them in mind and let them know. They'd love your referral. Hayley has been working with us part-time and she's the one who was on board Sapphire Princess. Has great skills with customer service. She's working in the store and we think that she's picked up a little bit of work locally with the way that the travel industry is at the moment that it's not all full steam ahead with bookings. But all of us, between all of us, we're working part-time for you to do your refunds, put your holidays in credit and start rebooking you for 2021. So what's your COVID story? We all have a story with COVID and we'd love to hear, maybe you can make a comment or call in and see us. Now, let me move on to my holiday happenings and let's get in and see what's been happening this week. Just when we thought that there was the light at the end of the tunnel, if you remember my video from the beginning of the month, we were looking at green shoots and thinking that we were starting to come out of this. We had a savage blow this week with the Qantas Travel Group announcing that basically they're putting the business in hibernation until at least 2021 and that most of their international flights will be cancelled, that they're working on salvaging a much smaller company so that they can come out the other side as much stronger. That resulted in 6,000 jobs slashed across their business and there have been 1,500 workers stood down until at least the end of the year. Those that are in the domestic area of their business, they will be returning to work much quicker. But any that are in the international side of the business, looks like there'll be delays until the end of the year. That includes almost 200 workers at the Jetstar maintenance base at Williamtown Airport. And that will be closed by the end of the year. Now let's talk about the Tasman bubble that we were all just so excited about getting started. Everyone had been ready, but now that we've had the spike in community transmission here and in New Zealand, it looks like that bubble has burst before it's even gotten up and running. There had also been discussions with Fiji about a Buller bubble with VIP lanes or vacation in paradise lanes for Australians and New Zealand travellers to visit exclusive luxury islands and be isolated from the rest of the world. Flights were set to start by the end of August and the Fiji government had already started its search for geographically isolated resorts to utilise, islands like Vomo. 
COVID protocols were being discussed for travellers to provide proof that they were negative of the COVID virus with tests 48 hours before they arrived, or being um, quarantined for 14 days and having to pay that when you got there. So that all seems fine. But it all seems to be pie in the sky at the moment, certainly with the recent outbreaks in Australia and New Zealand have had that too. So I would say that that's off the table for now and we will just watch this space. We have no further update on cruise restrictions for Australia, which have been suspended until the 15th of September. And New Zealand last week extended their ban. Theirs was only till the 30th of June, but it's been extended between 60 and 90 days, which would take us up until the end of September. As you know, Doug and I booked on the Christmas cruise to New Zealand with quite a few of our other travellers, cruise fans, and we still have a wait and see approach about that. It's probably going to be a miracle if we get to go, but we can always live in hope. And we seem to be doing a lot of that lately. So that brings me back to Australia. And what I might do is give you a rundown on the dates that the borders are scheduled to open. Now that's as of today, which is Sunday the 29th of June. However, the virus and its human hosts are very unpredictable. So that could change without notice, but here goes. So New South Wales borders are open. Victorian borders are open. Queensland borders are due to open on the 10th of July. Northern Territory borders are due to open on the 12th of July. South Australia should be the 20th of June, but they're not opening the borders to New South Wales or Queensland yet. So we still have a lot of restrictions for those of us that live in New South Wales. Tasmania is set for the 24th of July. And WA, well, we don't know about WA just yet. Norfolk Island will open on the 10th of July, but only for low risk travellers. So if you're coming from a hot spot, and there are some hot spots in Victoria at the moment, you will be denied. So it's all a very complicated business and it's changing every few days. And if it's not changing, there's talk about it changing. But I do have the information on my website so that you can easily access that instead of having to snoop around the internet to try and find it. So click on my website, I'll put the link in the information here and on my COVID information page, you'll be able to get the latest updates that are coming through from all the state governments. So, the bad news is that you'll only be able to do day trips and regional travel in your own state at the moment. The good news is that you'll be able to do day trips and regional travel in your own state at the moment. And there's plenty to see in Port Stephens, the Hunter Valley, parts of Western Australia, wherever you are, there is a lot to explore in your own backyard. So I'm happy and we need to be thankful for all our small blessings. So that's a segue into some good news about Virgin, with the administrator getting very close to securing a purchaser for the airline. Even better is there's talk that the credits that we have, and we have quite a few of them, may be taken up and used by the new owner. We've cancelled a lot of Virgin bookings from March and even through to the end of the year with their schedules cancelling. We had bookings for New Zealand, for Samoa, for the USA that were cancelled and those schedules haven't started yet because they're only doing very limited domestic travel. So we are hoping that some of those international routes might be restored so that people can get back out there and take those, or at least preserve their credits for those destinations. And I expect the detail of that will unfold over the coming weeks through into August so that we definitely know. But it's good to have a little bit of hope with Virgin at the moment. So we also got excited this week because Tash and Wendy have managed to rebook some of our travellers for 2021 using their credits. So. We're excited about that. It's cruise bookings and it's river cruises, things like that into Europe and Australia. And Tash even made a booking for 2022. So we have people looking out ahead. Maybe that you're, maybe you're thinking of skipping 20 and 21 and there are some opportunities for you to book into 2022. And as you know, it's just a matter of putting down your deposit for those 
a lot of the deposits are being protected anyway um, and it does give you something to look forward to and it may take us that long to be able to get back out there. So it's a happy dance for us from here. It's unusual to book that far out but we're grateful for the confidence that our customers are giving us to see us through till then. So aside from the widespread job losses in the travel industry, the Qantas woes, the stall, the Buller and Pacific bubbles, it looks like 2022 is going to be a good year for travel. So that's my wrap for the week. If you found this to be valuable, interesting, entertaining, or whatever, please share, please like, I really would appreciate it and it would go a long way. And click the bell if you'd like to hear when I send them out. So love to hear your comments about what you have in mind, whether you think travel's out for 2021 as well and you're gonna be looking at 2022, whether you'll never go overseas again, whether you're gonna stay closer to home, there's certainly a lot for you to see in Australia. We have a beautiful big continent to explore and maybe Mother Nature is telling us something. So enjoy your week. Catch up with you next week. Bye for now. Thank you.